rocking and rolling, our ship on the sea, rocking and rolling, with you and with me. Wind come and blow us gently along, mermaids come guide us and sing us this song. Still waters run deep. Marvella, the fairy tale, take me by your silver hand, sail me in your silver boat, sail me silently afloat. My love, the fairy tale, take me to your shining It was the coldest day of winter, and a little boy was trudging through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, the old woman had said, as she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. All morning, the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then, a very strange thing happened. As he was picking up his last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now, how a boy could lose his mitten on the coldest day of winter, I'll never know. But that's the way Grandfather tells the story, so it must be so. Off the little boy went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying on a snowdrift. as soon as the little boy was out of sight. A little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and when she saw the mitten with its feathery fur cuff, she snuggled right in to get warm. It was just the right size for a tiny mouse. Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping over the snow. Anybody home, she asked, when she saw the mitten. Only me, said the mouse. It's cold out there. Come on in. I'll make room for you. The two had just settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining. When an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten? asked the owl. If you mind your manners, said the mouse, Four owls always made her a bit nervous. And don't wiggle too much, said the frog. It's a bit tight in here. But it's cold out there, so come on in. 
we'll make room for you, said the mouse and the frog. So the owl tucked himself in. And it wasn't long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room for me in that mitten? The rabbit asked. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space left, but come on in. We'll make room for you, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself fully tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten. My dear friends, may I join you in that cozy mitten? The fox asked. Nervously, the rabbit looked at the owl. The owl looked at the frog. The frog looked at the mouse. If you don't cause any trouble, said the mouse, and nodded her head. It's cold out there, so come on in. We'll make room for you, said the mouse, and the frog, and the owl, and the rabbit. It's getting a bit tight in here now, thought the rabbit. But with the bitter wind outside, how could she turn anyone away? And if things weren't tight enough, the next visitor was a big gray wolf. What a fine mitten, said the wolf. Surely there's room for me. I don't know how we'll manage it, said the mouse. But as she did not want to upset the wolf, she said, but I guess we can try. It's cold out there, so come on in, said the mouse and the frog and the owl and the rabbit and the fox. Everyone scooted over just a bit and the wolf squeezed in. It was very crowded now, but at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar and he was very anxious to get in from the cold. Oh dear, cried the mouse. I don't think we've got any more room. I'll be very careful, said the boar. The wolf looked at the fox. The fox looked at the rabbit. The rabbit looked at the owl. The owl looked at the frog. The frog looked at the mouse. The mouse sighed and nodded her head. And with that, the boar squinched himself into the mitten. As if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a bear. He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals, even before the bear had a chance to speak. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or a thank you, he began to push himself into the mitten. First, he put one paw in, and the mitten creaked and groaned. Then he put the other paw in, 
and one of its seams popped. Then he took a deep breath and pushed himself in. Well, at that very moment, a little cricket had come along the snow. She was very old and her creaky legs ached with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she thought to herself, that looks like a nice warm place. I'll hop on over and see if I can squeeze in too. She was so small and with all the commotion, the animals barely seemed to notice her. So with a hop and a jump, she landed on the nose of the bear. The bear's nose wiggled and twitched. Then he opened his wide his mouth, took a deep breath in and yelled, Achoo! And all of the animals went flying out and landed softly in the snow. And there was the poor mitten with its seams all ripped and its old leather cracked and its red wool lining in pieces. Now at that very moment, the boy thought he heard a strange sound. He looked to the left, he looked to the right, he looked up, and then he looked down and realized he only had one mitten. So back he went to see where he had dropped the other one. When the animals saw his little blue coat in the distance, off ran the bear. Off ran the boar. Off ran the wolf and the fox. Off hopped the rabbit. Off flew the owl. Off hopped the frog. And the cricket, of course. When the boy finally got to his mitten, he saw that it had been all torn to pieces. And then he thought he saw, out of the corner of his eye, a little mouse scurrying away with a bit of red wool perched on her head. It looked very much like the red wool from the thumb of his mitten. Oh well, thought the boy. Grandmother will surely be finished with my new mittens by now. And he snuggled his cold hand into his coat. And off he went with the north wind at his cheeks and little Jackie Fox knitting at his heels. And grandfather says, he never did know what really happened to his mitten. Mouse and frog and owl and rabbit, fox and wolf and boar and bear. Cricket, cricket, bear and boar and wolf and fox, rabbit and owl and frog and mouse. Sail away, silver boat, on the waters gently float through the magic moon. Without an oar, we 
the moon, so big and round, that shines on the boat that is homeward bound. Back to the harbor, safe and sound, from its sail on the silvery sea.